Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here, bringing you another uh, math video. Doing this one a little differently, I'm trying to use the old, uh, you know, videotape myself writing trick. So, uh, this video is going to be on the definition of derivative. So, uh, in your calculus class, and in my calculus class, we've been doing um, what's called the limit definition of derivative. So, it looks something like this. So, f prime of x, so the derivative of a function is equal to the limit, and I use h goes to zero. Some teachers use uh, delta x of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So this is the limit uh, definition of derivative. So I'm not going to get into uh, exactly where this comes from in this video, but uh, I do have another video on it that I'll put a little link in here somewhere that uh, you can watch if you want to know where this definition comes from. And basically where it comes from is the slope formula. So it's pretty simple, um, but it's very useful. So I'm going to use this guy to be able to find the derivative of a root. So I'm going to use the square root of x plus 4. So one of the things that we have to be... Um, really careful with it is understanding about how this formula works. So what I have is two separate things. I have my um, my f of x plus h and my f of x. So my f of x, I already know what it is. It's just um, x plus, or square root of x plus 4. My f of x plus h, what that actually means is where I see an x in this guy, I'm going to replace it with x plus h. So I have to take that x and change it to x plus h. And when I do that, um, that really is what I stick right in there for that. So let's give it a shot. So I'm just going to get a new piece of paper. All right, so let's give it a shot. So remember, my function is this guy. Am I still on the screen? Yep. f of x is equal to square root of x, not plus h, plus 4, x plus 4. All right, so here we go. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as x as h goes to 0. A lot of my students end up writing x here because we're so used to it, but make sure to put h there. Sometimes I'll make that mistake too. And I'll just rewrite the definition. Um, f of x plus h minus f of x over h, and h goes to 0. So now what I do is I read that rewrite that story by putting in this guy. So I'm going to use that guy. So I have, so where I see that x, I'm replacing it with x plus h. So I have the square root of x plus h plus 4. So now I don't want to have just x, I have x plus h, so that entire x is replaced with x plus h. Then minus the f of x itself, so square root x plus 4 all over each. So anytime you have a limit, and especially not as it goes to infinity, but a limit to a finite, a number basically, to a finite thing, um, we're going to have to use conjugate in this situation. So the conjugate will multiply by the conjugate, and all the conjugate does is changes the sign in the middle. So this guy right here, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by x plus h plus 4 plus x plus 4, just like that. And I have to multiply the top and the bottom because I have to make sure that I don't actually change the equality of the expression that I have here. So I don't want to change its value, just like if I had a fraction. I was multiplying the top and bottom, I just created an equivalent fraction, sort of the same idea. So now when I do that, uh, I always tell my students, never really do anything with um, the part that you're not really conjugating. So we're conjugating the top here. So the bottom, what we end up doing is we just combine it. We don't do anything with it at this point. We may have to do something with it in the future, but not in this particular example, but in some other ones you might. But majority of the time, you won't have to do anything. So uh, remember for the conjugate, all we got to do is we don't have to worry about FOIL because this is, like if you look at it, you have two binomials being multiplied together. You don't have to worry about FOIL. What I tell my students is you do FLA, first and last for conjugate. So, um, so first and last. So then, so we go 
first, so the first two things times each other, so these two things. So the beauty of this is you don't have to really think about it. Um, you're multiplying two square roots with the same radicands. So just take what's left, what's underneath the radicand, so we end up with x plus h plus 4. And that's subtract, multiply the last two. So x plus 4 is going to be what's left, so root x plus 4 times root x plus 4. Take the radicand, x plus 4. And then the bottom, remember, just stays like it is. So ultimately, with any of these definition of derivative examples, whether it's a root or not, you want to cancel this h. We want to get rid of that guy. So that's our goal, is to get rid of that guy. And then we can sort of proceed with our limit. Because basically, at this point, when we sub it in, we have 0 in the denominator. So that's what we, we don't want. We have you know indeterminate form. We can't tell what the limit it is because we'll have a 0 on top and a 0 on the bottom. So we've got to get rid of that get rid of that h to be able to find this derivative. So if I look at this guy in the top, I'm going to have, so I have x subtract x, so those guys are gone right there. You can't see that very well. Those guys are gone. And then I have 4 subtract 4. So all I have left with in the top is an h. So actually I can cancel these right now, but I won't do it. I'll rewrite the step. And you notice each time I do it, I'm rewriting my limit. I don't actually get rid of that limit until I evaluate it. So it's like, I tell my students, you got one bullet in a gun, and when you use it, you get rid of it. So this is the bullet that we're holding on to until we can actually use it. So if you look at this guy, I have an H and an H. So what I do is I can cancel these two. So it's important what I tell my students, when you cancel that guy, I always put a one on top just to remind yourself that there is indeed a one there. So now what I do is... I evaluate my limit. So on the top, I no longer have a zero, so that's a good thing, right? So I put my zero in where I see h. So the only real spot for it is just right there. So I have one over, so I no longer need to write my limit and sign anymore. One over x plus zero plus four plus x plus four. And then I'm sort of running out of space here. Hopefully you guys can see this. So then if I look what I have, I have 1 over. I'll just keep going over this way. So I have 1 over x plus 4, because that's just 0, so plus x plus 4. So important to recognize what that actually is. It's a 1 over 2 root x plus 4. So sometimes people might actually square that, but you actually don't need to square it. You just add it. You have two of them, right? You have one of these and another one. So 1 over x plus 4, 2x plus 4. And that is my derivative. That is my f prime right there. So that's how you use the, the limit definition of derivative, or uh, definition of derivative, as I like to call it, um, to find the derivative of a square root. So I hope this helps you guys, and uh, please subscribe and look at my other videos. i got lots of videos on derivatives and things like that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class.